Hi, Periton Weather Meteorologist Paul Dorian here on Thursday, June 10th. Quite an interesting weather pattern unfolding for the next several days or so. Uh, we'll first talk about kind of the big picture and what kind of changes we can expect across the nation over the next five or ten days or so. A big change coming uh, from the southwest to U.S. all the way to the northeast U.S. and then we'll kind of focus in on a interest in smaller scale weather situation that's developing today and tonight in the Mid-Atlantic region where there will be some big differences from let's say New York City with little or no chance of rain to the DC metro region where there's, a, there's not only a chance of rain but a chance for some significant rainfall later today and tonight. Again let's start off with kind of the big picture here looking at the 500 millibar height anomaly pattern going forward here using last night's 6Z a model run of the GFS. First of all, orange on this particular type of forecast map represents higher heights than normal, typically associated with high pressure ridging. Notice we start off the day here on Thursday with a pretty deep upper level low sit, uh, situated over northern California, western part of Nevada, also over extreme northern New England and the southeastern part of Canada, but for the most part, higher heights than normal dominates the U.S. Watch what happens over the next several days here as uh, we go through the weekend. Here's Friday and then we go into the upcoming week and notice the blues here are the lower heights than normal starting to kind of retrograde or back into the northeastern part of the nation and notice also this high pressure ridging the higher heights than normal starting to kind of uh, focus on the southwest U.S and it's intensifying and you see heights like this this time of the year in the southwest u.s watch out in fact i expect temperatures as an example to reach 115 degrees early next week places like phoenix arizona yuma arizona and here we are now by sunday afternoon let's just keep moving forward and watch what happens here by the time we get into the middle part of next week this is tuesday and let's go all the way out to the middle of next week. This is next Wednesday. Very, very strong high pressure ridging centered over the interior west. Very hot pattern for places like California, Arizona, New Mexico, and throughout the western U.S. Meanwhile, over the northeastern part of the nation, strong upper level low. That will no doubt be associated with cooler than normal conditions in this part of the nation so kind of a big pattern change coming over the next several days that will produce some extreme heat out across the southwest u.s and cooler than normal conditions places like the great lakes mid-atlantic region northeast u.s by the time we get to the early and middle parts of next week well as an example of what we're talking about in terms of temperature this is from NOAA uh, with their six to ten day probability outlook for temperatures where it's red probabilities are higher than normal that will be above normal temperatures and where it's blue below normal temperatures and here we have much much uh, greater chance of above normal temperatures across the interior west and that of course is associated with that strong high pressure ridging that will build westward back out over the western u.s over the next five days or so meanwhile we have a large upper level low situated over the northeastern part of the nation by the time we get to the middle part of next week and this will be the result in terms of temperatures much much warmer even extreme heat over the southwest u.s. and much of the western half of the nation and cooler than normal in much of the northeastern quadrant of the nation well, let's now get to some of the finer details especially in the nor northeastern part of the nation the mid-atlantic region there's some interesting uh, smaller scale features to uh, uh, focus in on today. First of all, the cold frontal system is working its way, just inching its way to the south. It pr helped to produce some more showers and thunderstorms in the mid-Atlantic region uh, late yesterday, last night, and of course some of that rain fell heavily at times. Uh, many areas are really waterlogged right now. Now there's enough of a push of drier air in the northeast U.S. that New England will have a very nice day even, even down to New York City, upstate New Jersey little or no chance of shower and thunderstorm activity this morning how, uh, throughout the day I should say. However as this front 
settles uh, uh, southward today, it'll tend to stall out right in this region right here, and that will raise the chances of some numerous showers and thunderstorms, let's say in the D.C. metro region all the way across Delmarva Peninsula, a place like Lewis, Delaware, uh, Milton, Delaware, that, those areas today. Uh, later on in the day can get socked with some torrential rainfall, so we'll have to watch for that possibility. Over the last couple of days, the uh, focus of the heavy rain has been north of the Pennsylvania-Maryland border, and uh, maybe uh, y yesterday was a little bit to the south, the focus area over Delaware, the northern half of the Delmarva Peninsula. But today, it will be more like the D.C. metro region all the way to the Delmarva Peninsula for the focus of the potential heavy shower and thunderstorm activity. While New York City uh, very well could escape the entire day without any rain and D.C. Uh, could get walloped, Philadelphia is kind of in, the, in between the northern suburbs of a better chance of uh, no rain today, but the southern areas let's say southern New Jersey all the way to the uh, southern part of Chester County for example, they will have some some opportunity for showers and thunderstorms during the midday and afternoon. But again, the front stalls out across Virginia and that will be the area to watch for a possible heavy rain this afternoon and tonight and that threat will continue into the day on Friday. And let's take a look at the mid-Atlantic radar uh, echoes right now. It's kind of an interesting uh, rotation you can kind of see with these radar echoes. Notice this area up across south central Pennsylvania, central Pennsylvania, kind of moving from the east to the west, whereas the showers down here across Virginia and West Virginia moving to the north and east. Indeed, we have a, a boundary zone right in this region, right here, setting up at almost like a, a little bit of a low, t a low pressure rotation in the, uh, that part of the Mid-Atlantic region. Again, the threat for some heavy rainfall, uh, especially high this afternoon and tonight from, let's say, D.C. across the Delmarva Peninsula, uh, right in this region right here. A little bit of a threat across southern New Jersey and southeastern Pennsylvania, and uh, little or no threat across upstate New Jersey, New York City, and areas to the north and east. Well, let's walk through the surface forecast maps from the operational run of the GFS at 6Z. And here we have some scattered activity right now in terms of rainfall. But again, it intensifies basically just to the south of Philadelphia and uh, primarily across northern Maryland, northern Virginia, D.C., Delmarva Peninsula, where there can be uh, some significant rainfall later today and tonight. Notice a little low pressure area forms right along that stalled out frontal boundary zone which by this time early tonight we right across this region so low pressure develops along that frontal boundary zone again enhancing the chances for uh, some significant rainfall south of the mason dixon line let's move forward here and that threat will continue uh, into the overnight hours and into the day on friday potential some heavy rainfall again in that same region another low pressure system forms along that stalled out frontal boundary zone. So watch out even on Friday across Virginia, D.C., Delmarva Peninsula, perhaps even into the southern part of Pennsylvania. The setup is there for some more significant rain. Then let's move forward into the upcoming weekend. And notice shifts finally off the east coast. And we could be setting up for a pretty decent, uh, at least the first part of the weekend in D.C., Philadelphia, New York City, throughout the Mid-Atlantic region. Enough drying to reduce significantly the chances for rain on Saturday. It'll be warm, but not excessively warm. And then we have a cold frontal system uh, working its way across the Great Lakes by the latter part of the weekend, and that could set off some shower and thunderstorm activity in the Mid-Atlantic region late in the day, Sunday, Sunday night time frame. And then that kicks on out of here, and we get into a drier pattern, a more rain-free pattern, early next week. And this is the time where it will become extremely hot across the southwestern states. This is the forecast for Monday morning. This is what we call a thermal low. It's so hot out here, it kind of generates its own low-pressure area in the lower part of the atmosphere. And again, places like Yuma and Phoenix could reach 115 degrees in that Sunday, Monday, Tuesday time frame. Meanwhile, some cooler than normal air will be pushing to the 
south and east across the Great Lakes and New England with a couple of cold frontal systems in here. Notice by the middle of next week we have a thermal low, very, very hot across California, Arizona, New Mexico, throughout much of the western half of the nation by the middle of next week. Meanwhile, look at here, a nice, cool Canadian high pressure system uh, at midweek centered over the uh, northern part of the Great Lakes region, and it will no doubt be cooler than normal for this time of the year across the Great Lakes, Mid Atlantic, and northeastern part of the nation. So, interesting things going on today in the Mid Atlantic region on a small scale basis. And on a larger scale basis, a big shift in the overall weather pattern will produce some extreme heat early next week, middle next week, over the southwest U.S. and cooler than normal conditions over the northeastern quadrant of the nation. That's it for now for Paraton Weather. I'm meteorologist Paul Dorian.